release of a mantle of evangelism that would come on a whole generation, not just in churches, but signs and wonders in the streets. In the name of Jesus, right now, over everybody here right now, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that there would be conduits for the Holy Spirit to flow through right now. God, I thank you that evangelism only from the stage would not be the only thing that we would live as believers, as believers that are filled with the Holy Ghost, that everywhere we go, signs and wonders would flow through our hands, that words of knowledge would flow through your lives right now. I thank you that grassroots evangelism, that normal, everyday life, everywhere we go, everywhere we walk, every shopping store we enter, every drugstore we enter. Do you want this? Do you want this? Now is the time. Now is the time. Now is the time. Father, I thank you that you would build boldness in the bride. The body of Christ would walk in boldness. They would walk fearless. I thank you that righteousness would overwhelm everybody here right now. In the name of Jesus, I thank you that their sins and lawless deeds you'd remember no more. That's your covenant. God, I thank you that a boldness would come, that a purity and a power would hit the body of Christ right now. Do you want this? Do you want this? Jesus! Father, I thank you that you would begin touching people right now, all the way from this side, right now, that Holy Spirit, you would baptize people with fire right now. Holy Ghost, come and touch your people right now. God, I ask you in the name of Jesus to release this normal, everyday, lifestyle, Christianity, walking with the power of God flowing through. I thank you for the prophetic being made active right now in every believer in this stadium right now. Do you want this? The hunger of your heart draws the Father. What are you hungry for? Jesus! I thank you that every believer would walk in the prophetic. I thank you that massive signs and wonders would be released everywhere we go. I thank you that this is just the first of many stadium events where we get together to celebrate our King. But we walk fearless and bold like a lion because the righteous are bold as a lion. Do you want this? Do you want this? Do you want this? The time is now. The time is now. I want you right now to lift your hands up. I want you to cry out right now for Holy Spirit to land this mantle upon you right now. I'm going to pray that this be released, but I want you to lift up your voices right now and cry out for God to baptize you. More. God, touch the people. Release this mantle of normal lifestyle Christianity that everywhere they go, right now, release your fire. Right now. Shake, shake the church, God. Shake the church. Give us boldness right now. Let the fire of God fall upon your people. Release the boldness, God, that everywhere we go, we would know everything about the person in front of us. God, I thank you for massive salvations. I thank you that L.A. will never be the same. I thank you that everywhere we go from here, we will be a burning and shining light. We will be a match. We will be torches. We will be carrying the fire of heaven everywhere we go. One more time, say this. It's mine. It's mine. It's mine. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus right now that people would feel a burning right now, even on the top of their head, right now. Right now, 
Touch God. Release this. Release it right now. God, I thank you that everything you've placed upon my life, God, I'm asking you to impart it right now in mass. Right now, all across the stadium. Holy Spirit, touch the people right now. In mass, right now. If you're feeling a fire on your head right now, wave your hand in the air. Right now. More. More, God. Father, I thank you. You told me to come here. And you told me that you were going to release this upon everybody. Everybody that was hungry is going to walk away with a radical lifestyle. A radical, supernatural lifestyle. Where everywhere you walk, God's going to speak to you. He's going to speak to you about people. You have to utilize those words of knowledge. Promise me. Promise me that you do something with this thing. Do something with this thing. Father, I ask you for more right now. In Jesus' name. I want everybody to put your hand on somebody beside you right now. Holy Spirit. Let your fire fall. Holy Holy Spirit, let your fire fall. Holy Spirit, everybody, let your fire fall. Come on, everybody again. Are you ready? Holy Spirit. Let your fire fall. More, more. Sing it again. Sing it again. everybody here in the name of Jesus that right now they would be overwhelmed with the fact of what they're carrying. God, I thank you that there would never be passive Christianity again in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Jesus, I thank you for radical salvations in everyone's life, everywhere they walk outside of this place, everywhere they go. I thank you for radical miracles, radical healing. God, I thank you that what has been normal for me would become normal for everybody in here. In the mighty name, in the mighty name.
And out of America and off the shores of America, 
a massive missions movement is going to launch. Hundreds of thousands will leave America with generosity of hearts that the Great Commission will be fulfilled in this generation. How many of you believe now is the time? Declare with me, now is the time. Again.
just I feel in my spirit burden to give a call that is so much more than singing a chorus when you're surrounded by thousands of people that love Jesus this morning far more than an emotional response I want to invite you to the greatest story that has ever been written and it's a story and it started in the garden and it's ending with the man that's going to split up sky my name is Gloria Luz my dad I'm 20 years old I live in Nepal as a missionary this morning I want to just turn our attention to Jesus Christ a man who right now is seated on the throne at the right hand of his father and he's interceding and he's interceding for Yemen and he's interceding for Saudi Arabia and he's interceding for Nepal and he's saying father give me my inheritance in the nations and this morning my spirit is so burdened I look over this stadium and I see thousands of personal dreams. I see young men, young women, you have dreams in your heart, things you feel like God has given you. I believe in those things. But as I stand here, I want to invite you into a much greater dream. As I stand here, I want to invite you to something far greater than your personal dreams and desires. It's that the name of Jesus, the most beautiful name, would be made known in every tribe, in every tongue, in every ethnos. In Matthew 24, 14, Jesus says that this gospel of the kingdom will be preached to all nations, all language groups, and then the end will come. This morning, I want to call a generation to bravery. I want to call a generation to obedience. I just look over this room and I have to believe that in the heart of a young 20 year old man in this room, he's called to the nations and there is still the same yes that Hudson Taylor had. There is still the same yes that was in a 20 year old Amy Carmichael. There is still the same yes that was in Samuel Flavor when he said, I will go. I will think all things yeah. on one thing that he is with me to the end of the age. This morning, I'm going to pray. They're going to lead us. I don't know what you're doing, but I want to invite you this morning. I want to invite you to surrender your life into a greater vision. I want to invite you far more than an emotional response. I want to invite you to say yes when no one's saying yes to move to Yemen where you will be hated for his name to move to Nepal where you will live in constant discomfort because the Lamb is worthy. The Lamb is worthy. Jesus, Jesus, I ask God that right now in this stadium, your Holy Spirit would begin to brood, like it brood over the waters in Genesis 1. God, I pray, Lord, that you would right now release grace to say yes. God, I pray, God, right now that you would call out of a generation brave young men to say yes. Brave young women to say yes to the call. God, this morning, we just consider the man of sorrows. We just say, you're worthy, Jesus. You're worthy of every nation. You're worthy of the nations of the earth, and we give our lives. We say yes to you, Jesus. Tacoma, Washington, and God had been speaking about another wave of young people coming out of America, and Lauren was coming to see me, and the word that we heard was 
100,000 missionaries out of America, long-term missionaries to the mission field. And when we got that word, I said to myself, this is so crazy, what are we gonna do? Lauren is coming over, we, are we gonna tell him this? And we, he came in with Darlene and they sat down. I said, Lauren, I don't know if this is possible, but I'm feeling this word and it's 200,000 from America to the mission field. And Lauren stood up in his chair and he said, I've already seen 100,000 with Keith Green. It's time to double that number and see 200,000. And, and there, is, there is no greater missionary on the earth in my view than Lauren Cunningham, someone who has paved the way for all of us to go to so many nations of the world, someone who has absolutely lived the message his entire life, who's laid down everything for young people to go to the nations of the world. And Lauren has something absolutely explosive, and he flew in to detonate us with what he's about to say. Are you ready to welcome Lauren Cunningham from Youth with a Mission in this house? It's Jesus. It's all about Jesus. But here's what the Word says, Habakkuk 2.14, that the knowledge of the glory of the Lord will cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. Now that's not saying the glory of the Lord will cover it. That's other parts of the scripture. It says the knowledge of it. In other words, people are going to know the glory of the Lord. They're going to know about it. And that's our job. We need to realize that God has included us in reaching this goal so that the world will be saturated with the Word of God about Jesus because Jesus is the Word within the Word. One of the fruit of the wonderful move of God at Azusa Street, his name was Smith Wigglesworth. He made this statement just before he died. And he's buried there in Bradford in England. I was ministering there recently. And he said this, whenever the word comes together with the spirit, we will have the greatest spiritual awakening the world has ever known. God loves America, but he also loves the other nations. And today, we stand at the brink of something that could happen. When Jonathan Edwards was, began to lead out and it turned into a spiritual awakening across America, they not only had the gospel, but they had the word of God. The Bible was in every public school, in every classroom, was read every day. They prayed every day in every public school in America. And it was virtually in all the homes of the citizens of America. And out of that, when the Spirit and the Word came, there was a great spiritual awakening. Secondly, when Azusa Street took place, Again, at that time, the Bible was being read in all public schools, and also there was prayer in every school. That was at that time, and that's why the Spirit and the Word coming together. Now, when I say Word, young people, Jesus scroll too. I'm talking digital as well as hard copy, and I, I scroll a little bit myself. But... As you understand the two coming together, that's where the power is released. It's like the wood on the altar at Mount Carmel. Whenever the fire came, there was wood there. And the Bible and the power of the Holy Spirit has to come. Not just to America, but it's going to. And it's going to come to every nation on earth. But how can we end Bible poverty? It's this book, the book that transforms nations. I wrote a, wrote a book with that title too. And I'm not talking about my book. I was talking about the Bible. As I saw it in the nations of the earth, where they had the Bible in their foundations, they had great spiritual 
results. Now we look at the po poverty of the Bible of the world. Now I have found three things as I've been going to leaders. I've been to two popes. I've been to uh, heads of uh, denominations and so on. And, and as I've gone to them, they all unite around Jesus, around prayer, and around the Bible. The Bible going to every person. And so we want those three things, seeing that the move of God will not just happen on the church, that's revival, but that we will see a, not only the revival, but the great spiritual awakening that will come upon all sinners, that the knowledge of the glory of the Lord will cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. Can you believe for that? All right, we must pray for the ending of BiblePoverty.com. Go there, sign up. I'm trying to get a million people to sign up. So when you sign up, then get 100 more to sign up. And it just simply says, I will pray regularly for the end of Bible poverty. Because without the word, it's not going to last. It's not going to last. But with the word, it will last. Now, here's the challenge to your faith. 425 weeks from now. I'd like to give Jesus, I think you will too, a present for his birthday. That's Christmas 2020. How can we see the Bible go to every person on earth? By just 2023. 2020, I mean. And as we look at the book of Revelation, chapter 14, verse 6, I saw another angel flying in mid-heaven. Now, they didn't know 2,000 years ago about satellites. Having an eternal gospel and preach to those who live on earth and to every nation, every tribe, every tongue, and every person. Wow. Is that possible? I've been meeting in the last four weeks with the heads of, you know, 36 of the heads of the Wyc Wycliffe translators. I've been meeting with uh, Faith Comes by Hearing leaders, and I've been met meeting with high-tech people, and our people have been in Silicon Valley and so on. Did you know that by 2020, <laughs> this will challenge your faith, if we can get the Bible into the last 1,778 languages orally, and we can translate it, and then we'll give it to the professionals to get it in written form by 2033. But just orally, we can do it with 1,778 teams of three to five. We've been testing this out. We know we can do it. And we need to give a little training, yes, a couple of years, and we can get it out by 2020, literally a Bible in every language on earth. Think about what that means. Now, there is a satellite up there, another angel, mid-heavens. Mid and we have access to that. As Christians, I've been meeting with top people, and we have access. And that word will come through to every telephone on earth without a server, without an AT&T or, or telephone company. It's coming, and it's coming right by 2020. We're going to get the Word of God out. Now, I want to show you the wave that's going to come now. It's on video, and I, I live by the ocean. I love waves. And it's, it's broken, they told me. But anyway, on that wave that is growing, 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 it is going to be the wave that those that are 30 and below, you're going to get to ride the wave, the biggest spiritual wave that has ever taken place in all of history. And the rest of us are going to pull you up with jet skis to the top. And when you were riding the wave, I'll tell you what's going to happen. There's the foam that comes over the top of you after a while. Keep riding it because there's people that haven't heard yet. And we're going to keep riding it till every person on earth has the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. And who else is the glory of the Lord? Say his name. Jesus. Say his name. Jesus. Say his name. 
Jesus. There comes a time in every person's life where they begin to be divinely interrupted. We have been divinely interrupted today. As I was listening to Gloria and listening to Lauren Cunningham, I felt that we needed to respond. I remember I was a freshman in college and I was in my dorm room, I was getting my degree. I had my dorm mates picked out for the next year. I had everything going and I got divinely interrupted by Jesus. Listen to me, listen to me. Jesus wants to divinely interrupt you right now. And he said, Nick, you are responsible for your generation. The prayers that you are praying, the things that you are declaring to see your generation saved, you are responsible for it. It's not good enough just to pray. You have to be the answer to your own prayer. And this, whatever time it is, right now, we need to make a covenant before heaven. We need to have a reaction. This is what we're going to do. I want you to take your shoes off. I know it's wet. I don't care. And we're going to stick it in the air. If you will fully adopt what Gloria was talking about, if you will fully adopt what Lauren Cunningham is talking about, if you say, yes, I will go. Yes, I will mobilize. If you can't go, then you're responsible to mobilize those who can go. You're responsible to pay for those to go. I want you to lift your shoes up. Lift it up real high over this place. Lift it up high all over this place. Look to heaven. Say, Jesus, here I am. Here I am. Here I am. I want to go. I will be your messenger. I will be your missionary. Just keep your shoes held up. We're about to explode and worship in this place. But before we explode and worship, it would only be appropriate that we release the sound in this stadium, and it's the sound of going. It's when inspiration turns to activation and we walk out the door and the gospel goes everywhere we go. It's the sound of going to the least, the last, and the lost. It's the sound of the hopeless gaining hope. It's the sound of the entire earth hearing the name and the love of Jesus. So on three, can we shatter the silence over the nations with the sound of going. On the count of three, can we release a sound so loud that LA hears that the love of Jesus is here and it's now, and that now is the time for a missions movement that will touch every people on the earth. One, two, three.
Jesus! 